Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our very first lecture of creating a complete multi-vendor e-commerce web system. The system will have the admin panel whereby the administrator will be using to manage his platform or their platform and we shall have a mobile application where the mobile application will be used for the vendors to post their products as well as the customers to find their products on that platform and place orders and the orders get delivered through the mobile application and then we shall have the admin portal and the admin portal will be used uh, for managing the system and then we shall have the website so those are the three things that we're going to have in this uh, uh, system that we're going to create so by the end of this system or by the end by the end of this series of videos that we're going to create you should have enough knowledge that can help you to do almost every kind of a system that you may want to face so it's not going to be an easy journey so i want you to have the, all the commitment to watch and practice until we finish the whole uh, journey and i know no, no, some people are going to give up along the way but i request you who is watching this video or who is part of this live session not to be among those ones who are going to give up because at the end of this tutorial you'll have learned a lot of techniques that uh, will help you to uh in your programming what in programming experience i'm going to take you step by step and i'll try to make sure that i explain everything so that you can understand however this tutorial is not for totally totally beginners so you have to be at least at a certain level in order to cope up with that because a lot of code that i'm going to share with you is going to be reusable and some techniques they will require at least you to have the basics of uh, what you're going to be teaching so if this is your first video and you have never programmed anything still i have a relevant content that i'm going to show you that can help you to get started if you're not a really big a real beginner let's say that you already know your basics of html and basics of php still i have a place where i can get you started and let's say that you already know php but you don't know a technology like laravel still i'm going to show you a tool that can help you to get started however if you already know some basics of php and you just want to get started still you can take it from here so let's let's begin with our first scenario let's say that this is your first video you have never practiced anything so if this is your first video this is what you're going to do uh you'll just simply go to youtube i believe everyone here knows youtube.com so go to youtube and then search uh, for my channel it is called learn it with mohindo so after searching for my channel you click on this first channel that shows up so when you click on this first channel that shows up you'll go ahead and click on uh, playlist so in this playlist you'll find there are different videos that are prepared for you at any level that you are that can help you to get started with programming so let's say that you have never programmed anything there is this playlist called web for beginners so this web for beginners will help you to learn it has uh it has uh, how many videos it has 31 videos this web for beginners will give you very good basics that will help you to learn beginning from totally totally zero now let's say that uh, you already know basics you already know html you already know php and mysql you already know the just basics of them but you don't know uh, laravel still i've prepared for you a tutorial here it even has a project in it there are 70 there are 80 videos 79 videos in this tutorial i'll teach you uh from zero how you can get started with laravel so there are 29 i mean there are 79 videos here so these videos i have two projects in them so by the time you watch these pro videos and practice and finish them you will be very powerful with laravel let's say that you already know laravel and you need to know just advanced techniques of uh of uh how to create admin panels there's another tutorial here it has 41 videos so in this tutorial you'll be able to learn how to create uh what how to create a web system without writing code or without any pain 
but let's say that you already know laravel and you just want to get started still you don't need to watch all those videos you can just start watching what i'm going to be doing and then learn until we finish and you become you, you have this more knowledge on your docket and once you have this knowledge you can be able to make any kind of money from programming based in uganda here because right now there's a lot of uh jobs that need programmers only the programmers that are serious and talented are not there so let's begin our journey straightforward so that is just a basic introduction for where i can get started from now i'm expecting you to already know basics of laravel if you don't know basics of laravel i've already shown you how to what to do uh, so if you know basics of laravel you know how to run composer install composer part then you can get started with this tutorial now uh that is uh, our timer we shall always do 40 minutes every day so we have started our timer when it rings we shall be done without today's tutorial or without today's lecture uh -huh. okay let's begin so in islam we say bismillah let us start so we are going to start with some code uh if you want this code i'm going to put the link in the description uh i don't want to create everything from scratch i want to i want us to start somewhere so i'm going to put the link of my repository in the description so that you can be able to get this code and start somewhere just like i've told you without from zero 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 so you go to github put github stroke mobilehood or you can just simply go to github.com and then search mobilehood okay go and search this is my just aka or my name that i use search mobilehood like this so on the results you'll be able to see uh my user account this is account so click on my user account or you can just go to github.com stroke mobilehood so in this user account you'll find uh the project that we are going to use for basics if you don't want to use uh, github still i'm going to put the link in the description of this video and you'll find still the project that you're going to use uh for basics and i'm going to show you how i'm going to set up that project and get started so this is the project that we're going to use it's going to call it's, we, are, we are calling it market link so market link it is the project that we shall be using for creating everything that we're going to be doing right now so go ahead and click on this market link so when you click on market link it will take you to the project itself then after create, after reaching on the project i'm going to put also this link in the description of this video so that uh, if you don't want to pass through that far you can just simply click on uh, that link and then you'll be able to download uh, this project so uh -huh. so after reaching there just simply come here to where there is the word code and then click on download zip so by doing so you're going to get the basics of the code that you're going to begin with so you wait for a few uh, seconds depending on your internet speed so my internet is a bit slow so here it is downloading let me download it let me download it this thing is disturbing let me stop so i said download so when i said download it will go ahead and download for me this repository so it'll go to where this repository is and then unzip it so you, when you unzip it it will create for you a folder called market link web main okay so i'm going i'm just going to copy this folder and put it in my htdocs so if i speak htdocs and uh, your wamp or mamp you know what i mean so htdocs is the folder where we, we, we in your wamp so right now you should be knowing what is meant by wamp or mamp or zamp okay so htdocs is the folder where you put your projects okay in your zamp so i'll copy this uh folder and then come to my htdocs which is here and then come to just first delete what i already had here okay so come here and then i'm going to paste it here Okay, so I'll come here and I paste it in this folder uh, htdocs. Okay, so I've pasted the code that I've just downloaded. Okay, so it is, I've just called it Market Link Web Pro. Okay, so after doing so, this will come with a lot of code. 
among the code that will come with it will come with what with the with the database okay so i'm going to show you how to set up how to set up the database and how to set up everything so after downloading this code go ahead and open uh, your visual studio code at this point you should be knowing what's meant by visual studio code so this is my visual studio code so i'm just going to drag and drop the other project in here okay so let me go ahead and move i've opened a lot of things you'll forgive me all right so let me just go to visual studio code i've opened a lot of projects okay so i just open a new instance of visual studio code and then i go to a uh, file and then say open folder and then after clicking on open folder I'll go ahead and click on um, htdocs where I've just put my project and you can see my project is here called market link web main okay that one so I'll go ahead and open it so in this folder if you want to create your own repository if you want to create your own repository you can just delete i think it is not there i wanted to show you if the github folder is not there you can just go ahead and drag and drop this one to github uh, to github what to github software and create your separate what your separate uh, github repository so all right so there it is so that there is my project uh there is my project market link web main so in this project there is what there is um, an sql file it comes with an SQL file. This is the database, the database that we're going to begin with. All right, so there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to try to run the project. So you can run the project by running PHP artisan serve, or you can just simply run the project by doing localhost, then stroke your project. So let me just simply come here and say localhost stroke market link market link web dash main so you can see that my project is not working at this moment so i'm running it because i placed it in the what in uh, in my local host so let's go ahead and you can as well run php at sun serve you know what i what is meant by php at sun serve at this point so you can just simply open here a new terminal a new terminal and run php artisan serve so you see it is an error so what you're going to do right now you're going to install uh the uh, you're going to install the, the 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 vendor files or you're going to install uh the the packages that we have in this project because you see the packages folder is not there so to do that you just simply run composer like this install so open your terminal of this project and then inside this project terminal. So you see I'm in this market link folder. So you know how to open terminal. Just simply come here to terminal and then say new terminal. Then you'll be able to have a terminal. Okay. So go ahead and run PHP at I mean composer install. By doing so, it will go ahead and install for you the composer. So after doing so, I can go ahead and refresh. You can see now I'm getting the error 500 okay so if you're getting the error 500 it means that you have not added your what your dot in file your dot in file has not been added so right now i'm going to add dot in file so i can be able to do what i can be able to start working with my project so to add dot in file just simply write you can just copy this example of dot in file eh? you just copy it and then paste it then rename it rename it rename it and remove this word example so it can be just dot inf as it is there so by doing so you'll have the dot inf file so this dot inf file when you refresh here you should have some errors like this ones okay so they say that uh, we don't have a key so we can generate a key by running this command okay you can generate a key by running this command so you can press on that and then the key will be generated okay or you can just simply come here and run the command here php at sun key and then the colon generate so by doing so it will generate for you the key 
so this is just an a key this one here that has been generated that makes our project a little bit unique from all kind of projects so that is it that's all that's all that's all you need okay now we have not linked our project to the database okay but we need this project to be linked to the database so that when we enter here the login information and submit we should be able to log in because right now there's no database that has been linked to this project so let's go ahead and you run your your what your database using php admin i mean sorry you run your database using zamp and then you go ahead so you can see my exams already running okay then you go ahead and create it and then import it so i hope at this level what i'm speaking you already know what it's meant otherwise if you don't know what i'm talking about then you may need to watch those videos that i told you so i'll assume that you already installed your zamp and it is it's already running so if it's already running let's go to our php admin so at this moment you should be able to know php admin so i'll go to localhost stroke php admin and then i'm going to put a folder i mean sorry a database called market link but for me i already have this database okay this database Okay, so you can just simply come and click on new and create a folder called, I mean a database called market link. Or you can name it as you want. So for me, I already have this market link, what? Market link uh, folder, all right? Market link folder, this one here. Okay, so all what I need is to, all what I need is to, is to, is to do what? All that I need is to import the database. So, and that is already imported. But let me delete everything so you can see that I'm doing everything from zero. So, I'll go ahead and select all the tables and then I drop them. So, I'm going to show you how to import the database. Let's assume that you've created your database as I've shown you. So, go ahead and click on uh, market link. Then, after doing so, go ahead and click on um, import. Or you can just simply drag and drop it here. I'll go ahead and click on import then after doing so uh go ahead and click on choose file so i'm going to choose a file and then i browse to where my project of market link is so my project of market link is in downloads and then as i as i told you you'll find there what an sql file okay an sql file or is it sql or is sql file it is here marketlink.sql it is here you can see it then i'll go ahead and import this one and then i say import so to process and then you'll see that all my tables were imported successfully so that is how you import your basic tables so at this moment if i come here and refresh i should be able to do what to uh, log in but I cannot log in or I, I cannot access my project. Why? Because I have not, I have not done what? Because I have not uh, connected my project with uh, my, uh, I've not connected my project with my what? With, with the database. So let's go ahead and connect the project with the database. So to do so, I'll come to our database here. I mean, I'll come to .inf here. And then I come to where there is a database. So the database is called market link so you give the same name that you give to the database here it's the same name that you provide there so i paste there the database name and then you put here the database username and then you put here the password uh, so uh, for most of windows uh, things you will not find here the password i mean you will not put there the password most of zamp or on windows you don't the, the password is nothing for the default so for me i'm using mac and then i'll go ahead and refresh and then still i'm having a small problem so what I need to add is something small. I need to add this line. There's a line that I need to add. 
I need to add this line the source of my SQL socket so let me go ahead and put the socket link immediately here after the database if you're using the Mac so if I come and refresh now things should look awesome so that is how you connect your database so you just simply create the dot in file and then configure it just like I've told you if you run it using PHP at answer it is also okay there is no problem uh, with that all right so we proceed uh, we proceed we proceed we proceed mm -hmm. so after doing so after doing so um, after doing so after doing so I'm going to go ahead and uh, login okay so the login default the default login of this project however I'll show you everything I'll show you like how you control the whole project okay but here you come here to admin users this is where we're going to find all the tables of admin users so I uh, just copy this username and then come and paste it here and then password is 4321 4321 and then click enter then be able to log in so there I've successfully logged in so that is our project that is our project okay that is our project now so let me just take you through this project basics remember we're going to we have, as i told you that this is a project that i was already built most of it so i don't need to repeat it i want to reuse my code so we can come up with uh, another something bigger that i want you to be part of or that i want you to uh to be able to do that's what i've shared with you the source code of this particular project so you can take it from there so in this project uh, however i'll explain things okay i'll explain how everything works so in this project we're having here uh users so this users is uh the users as you know we're having here companies so as we are doing project the project itself we are registering uh, different companies okay then we are having here um the system configuration that will have the company profile the subcategory and then the, the, the store categories employees etc okay so and here we have the stock uh, items okay so here in the stock items uh it is where you will find uh in the stock items to find the stock items themselves then here we have the stock records these stock records it is in case you want to manage the the stock in and the stock out the inventory this is a place where you manage it from okay now let us stick stick just back to the stock items so in these stock items there is a form that you fill to add a stock item and here you'll go ahead and select the relevant category and then you select the name of the product and then select the i the the, the, the image the image and then you put the sku if you want to track this product with your own code or with a separate code and then you attach multiple photos if you want to okay so i've already done this logic i'm just going to explain how it is done and then you put the buying price and the selling price and then the original quantity and then the description so that is how you do what you create a product whoever you can go ahead and add a product for example you can add here an image just show you let me just get here some image for example this image you can go ahead and add it there so if i come and edit you'll find that the image is there so that is uh, basically that's what we're going to do so now uh we have finished configuring the what the mobile app i mean sorry the web system so if you face some challenges you can let me know and you may not give you should not give up so make sure that at least at this level you're having this project set okay you're having this project set so what we're going to do right now is now to go to the vendor side as i said uh, most of the logic will be done by the mobile application since vendors will be uploading products using the mobile app so we are going to face it and see how we do things using the what the mobile application so i hope uh this level
you haven't hope at this level you haven't uh, faced a lot of challenges however if you have faced challenges uh, still you may try again until uh, your project is running like this one okay so let's proceed let's proceed to another thing so as i told you we are going to have a mobile application for vendors and the mobile application it is where we are going to be using it we shall be using for for what for uh for uh for managing users i mean for uploading products as well as uh, finding the product that already the, i mean our customers browsing the product that we are selling and also contacting us by the product that we do what that we are selling okay so now uh what are we going to do right now let us go ahead and uh, and uh, look at the mobile application okay so i'll come and open the mobile app i don't know whether it's even open let me first close everything that i've already opened here uh, so the mobile application as i told you it is reusable product i mean it's re re reusable code so we're going to start somewhere and i'm going to share with you the code of the mobile app so that we can also start on the same page with me where is it anyway <laughs> where is the project where is the project the project uh, so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new repository and put this project there and I show you how you download it and we download it together and we run it together so you shouldn't say that uh, when I created the project I did what I skipped steps okay let me go ahead and open this project Okay, so I'm going to create a new repository. I had not created that one of mobile application. I'm going to, so I've already given you the link for the first repository. So let me create the second repository of the code so you can be able to download the code. Okay, so I'll come here to my GitHub. Okay. So I can say, that okay okay so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do what let's go ahead and open the repository for the web I mean for the mobile app so I'll come here and secret new repository I'm going to call it um, market link market link mobile so it's a mobile app market link mobile app okay i'm going to save it all my mobile application i saved them in this folder of github so i'm just creating a new repository this is just github nothing else there's no magic there then i go ahead and create the repository so it is there I can go ahead and publish the repository and i make it public so that you can be able to access it okay i publish the repository there you go so i'll wait for it to finish publishing and then i'll go ahead and show this repository in the finder so i have here the repository and then we have here uh, the mobile application i mean the code that we're going to reuse so in this code i'm just going to copy the most important code so let me go ahead and select everything here and then i'm going even to publish it and then i'll use i'll download it afresh so you can know that I did not reuse the code that's already existing. So I'll go ahead and remove what I don't need. I don't need GitHub. I don't need the Android. I don't need um, Build. Oh, sorry, I don't need Build. Okay, so those folders, I don't need them. Okay, I don't need this JKS file. I don't need these credentials. I don't need those ones. I think these are the only one that I need. I may not even need the idea. Yeah, I don't need the idea. And let me just take the idea for the time of, for the sake of, 
yeah so that's all i need that's all i need so i'll just go ahead and copy and then paste it here git attributes mm. replace all right so there we go okay there we go uh so let me go ahead and make my commit let me go ahead and push make sure that it is pushing So wait for just one minute. Perfect. So it has pushed. So I can just simply right click and say open view in GitHub. So there is the code. So you have two things to download. The first thing is the code that I've just given you uh, of the web. And the second one is this one of the model of the mobile mobile so i'll put the link in the description so you just need to come here to code and say download zip so you'll also have the code for mobile so now this mobile application that we're going to use it is uh, made in flutter okay so if you don't know flutter still i get you covered you can come to my youtube channel here and then come to uh what is flutter tutorials this one flutter bootcamp so in this flutter bootcamp there are 58 videos that you may need to practice in order to be on the same level where i need you to be so once you finish those 58 videos you'll be good you'll be good you'll be good to get started with what with mobile application development and even be on the same page with us but for the sake of time i'm going just to in case you want to learn flutter deeply you just come and watch these videos i'll take you step by step so let's assume that you have now downloaded your mobile application code uh, so i have the zip so you'll unzip it and so i'll just simply come here for some you have already downloaded it so i'll just simply come here and say show in finder so this is my code for the mobile app so i'll assume that you've already set up your environment for flutter if you don't know how to set up the environment for flutter you can just come here on my youtube channel and watch only one video here open this flutter bootcamp and then watch this first two video this introduction video okay this introduction video in this introduction video i'll teach you how to set up your what your platform for flutter only that video okay so now i have finished i've finished doing what i finished uh i finished downloading the code so i'll go ahead and open my android studio others use visual studio code but for me i'm going to use android studio so i'll go ahead and close all the projects and then i'll go ahead and drag you see i'll go ahead and drag and drop in this folder in my android studio so for the first time it's going to take time to sync but uh, mine has already finished syncing so all that i need is just to run the project so i'll assume that you are on this level with me now there are some challenges here if your computer is not very powerful you can really face challenges with uh, debugging so you can use the mobile app i mean sorry the mobile phone to debug if your computer is powerful still you can use the what uh the mobile sorry the the desktop app uh to debug so i don't know which one which which step should we take i don't know whether i should use uh to debug from the mobile app directly or we should be first publishing we debug using the using the what using the using the postman and then publish and then use the mobile application to i think that's the most effective way however for me i always debug 
uh, directly with the mobile app. But the best way it will be like uh, you first push online and then you pull this side. Okay, so I don't know which one is most effective. Uh, so now at this point, uh, we have our mobile, I mean our computer there and then the app is there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be debugging directly from the, phone, from the mobile phone. Okay, I mean from the emulator and I'm going to show you how you debug it. So you have this code. So let me go ahead and run it. So I'll go ahead and run here one of my emulator. So your computer should be powerful to cover the emulator. If you cannot cover, uh, if you cannot debug using the emulator, then you can use the what? Uh, the web. I mean, sorry, you can use the mobile phone. Okay, so let's proceed. So to load, go ahead, put the emulator here. So my emulator is there loading. There you go. Okay. So let's run the application. There's an error. Okay, so we'll have to run this in order to create. So open the terminal and run that command so you can create the Android folder. Um, let's try to run again. Let's see if the Android folder is created. Does not create it. What are they saying? I think we'd have copied the Android folder as well because it is not running with that Android folder. Okay, they're saying mobile market is invalid. That package name, so let's let's first close the project and rename. So they say they don't want something with a hyphen. So let's remove the hyphen. Then drag and drop it. Okay. Okay, there we go. So I have to run again this in terminal, open terminal and run flutter, create, and then with a dot. So it can be able to generate for us the Android folder. Yes, the Android folder has been generated. Okay, the dependencies are being installed. So everything is now getting better. So let's be patient good all right so it has run i mean it has worked uh let's go ahead and delete this test folder i don't need it refactor delete test folder okay so i've deleted it all right so let me go ahead and run my project so i'll go ahead and click on uh, run and see if it will work
so for the first time to may take time so we shall wait for it to run and then i'll show you how we debug so don't worry for the first time things seem to be boring but once we are set you see things will be running so let's wait until it finishes uh, running So it is processing let's wait just for uh, one minute like two minutes for the first time it is a little bit slow okay so at, as it is processing so i'm going to show you a technique that we'll be using for debugging i don't know whether to look for you but for me it works for me and uh, it is very powerful so uh, when we are doing a mobile application or mobile systems Sometimes we, I mean, most of the time, almost all the time, we need APIs. So creating an API, every time you do something, you may need to test it. Okay, you may need to test and see if it works. Okay, before you publish it or you do other further steps. So you find it tricky when you want to connect to your local host using the what? Using uh, using the mobile application. So for me, what I do, I always first make sure, I always first make sure that, I always first make sure that my project can run on local host, on local host like this, by putting it in, uh, in the what? In the local host folder. So also first make sure that the project is running in the local host, okay? like the web project, we call the web project is the parent. So make sure it is running on the local host. So after making sure that it is running the local host, so to make sure that it is running on the local host, of course, the Laravel project, you need to add there the dot .htt access on the root folder and in the root folder and put this dot .htt access. So dot .htt access should look like this. You can search it on internet just search laravel.ht access okay if it just make sure that your laravel project is running in your what you know the H, i mean is running in the ht docs or is running on localhost you can as well uh, search on internet if you if it did not work like if you should you should run on localhost without running php ads and serve because of some reasons that i'm going to show you so it works it has to because mine is already working so it means that you are sources to work. Even for many people, it does work. So after making sure that your project is running on localhost, without PHP ads and serve, most especially it is uh, made possible by the use of this uh, uh, HTT, HT access, okay? And this is the file of HT access that you put in the root of your project. So the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to see how you can access your localhost through emulator. So I'm going to give you the scenario when you're using emulator and another scenario when you're using, okay, the application is there and it is working. Okay, it's there and it is working. So we're going to use it. All right, so another way, I mean, if you're using the emulator, so you must make sure that, you must make sure that you can access your localhost on your emulator. Remember, emulator is, on a, is, a, is, a, is an Android uh, phone, but the low cost is on the other side of the zamp. So to do so, for me, I have uh, an IP for accessing the local host on my emulator. If you're using Mac, just come here and search access, access local host on emulator and then say Mac. Okay, so when you click on access local host on emulator Mac then you'll be able to get an IP that you can use to access the local host on your Mac. So if you're able to access the local host on your Mac, it will make your work very, very easy in a way that you can just test something directly without first publishing on internet, without using the postman, all those things. Uh, so on Mac, this is the most perfect answer and they are saying this is the local host on Mac. Okay, let's go ahead and test it. So to test it, so to test it, 
now you see now my mark on my mark i use this port okay i use this port i don't just use plain localhost i use this port of triple eight okay so on my mark i can just simply so this is the port that i use so on my mark i can just simply before i even go to the app i just simply go and open my chrome and then put there uh the the port okay so you see look at the beauty the beauty is you can be able to access your local host on your android emulator okay you are able to access your local host on your android emulator you see all my projects on my local host are here so all that i need is just to access the project that i'm working which is a uh, market web market link web main so when i click on it you see i'm able to access everything there so what does that mean it means that we are able we are we are able to even we are able to even access our api without even directly with to the heart to our application because this is a phone and we're able to access it from here so that is uh, one powerful technique now if you're using a phone you can also search uh, one for the window so that is the ip for the mac so i'm just going to be using this one for testing so if you're using the phone i mean sorry if you're using windows so that is uh, one for the mac you can just come here and put windows okay so i put on windows come to the first uh log the first search result it is almost the same it is almost the same i think it is the same all what you need uh they say you can use this one you can use the one localhost you can use this uh so that's for the windows you can use this i think it's the most popular 2.2.2 and then stroke your project and there there are some few things in case it doesn't work you can set it this is how you set it so it must work it has to work so if you're using a port you can see this is where you set your port from so find a way you can even put this in your but I think this is a long process you can leave this one so you have to find a way to make sure that you can access your project on uh, your what on your uh, emulator okay so once you access your project to emulator what does it mean it means that we are going just to be debugging directly to the android phone and once something works we know it works we don't need again to approve uh, in any other way okay so let's say that um let's say that uh, you do what let's say that you're, us you're using a phone there is also a way how you can use a phone so access localhost on a network search network uh, network then say windows okay so if you're using a physical phone you may need to check out this one they say this is the ip that you can use to access the localhost on your windows on network so these phones must be connected to the same router so you should be having at least a wi-fi router or you should be having an hotspot whereby you're hotspotting with your phone and your computer is connected to the same hotspot so by doing like this you'll be able to you should be able to access your local host on your physical phone on the network okay so that is how you do it okay uh if i'm using you so you have to make sure it works okay it you have to make sure it works so let me try to see if there is one for mac so if it is the same so uh, there it is access localhost on mac let's come to stack overflow so there should be an ip for us so mac users mac users i see there is this one i think it's almost the same so there is this okay there is this one okay there is this one so you can try all of them until it is working okay you can try all of them until it is working i think this is the working one so you have to try okay you have to try or they can say that you can run this you can run this and they'll give you what is your ip on the network so go ahead and open your terminal and then run this okay then put your password see then they'll give us they'll give us our ip okay they say that okay what did this one say what did this one say 
to the land this and then edit the file as this okay so you add this here okay you add this if i configure and check okay so i can just copy this and add this i don't know whether i added it already i think i added it some time back okay yeah so you see i added it here so just add this number and then say localhost then you press and then you go ahead and save so when you save you'll be able to access this through the mobile phone so you can be able to debug using them what using the mobile app using the mobile phone okay so that is how so you save by just pressing con command and and x okay then you'll be able to do what to save but for me i don't make it and that's why not save so by doing like that you'll be able to access your local host on your physical mobile phone so you can do that for the mac just make sure that it's working if you're using the mobile phone if you're using the the what if you're using just the thing that should add here in hosts uh, on windows if you're using on windows just make sure that that's what it does work like you can access that ip using your phone using your your phone or physical phone or what for me i'm going to be using emulator and you can see i've successfully accessed my ip so that is where we're going to start from tomorrow so make sure that you download this code make sure that it is running make sure that you're able to access your local host on your emulator on your physical phone if it's what you're using so that is why we're going to stop from today so uh make sure that you practice i'm going to upload these videos make sure that you practice make sure that uh, you access the local host on your computer make sure i mean on your emulator uh, make sure that uh, the project is running so tomorrow we can start doing the real business so you can see for me the project is running i've already shown you how you can download the what the code so tomorrow we can start with real business so that's it for today unless there's a question is there a question i think there is no question so i'll upload the videos and i'll share with you goodbye and see you tomorrow